Hey, I am Lindsay from Spray Easy, and today we're going to talk about the fast kick gun and the closed cell foam insulation. When your gun arrives, you'll need to assemble the air atomizer and the handle. The handle can go on either the left or right hand side, depending on whether you're left or right handed. There are three screw holes you can choose from. The fast kick gun will require an air compressor which is capable of 12 CFM at 100 PSI, which is equivalent to 5 horsepower electric compressor at 220 volts or 8 horsepower gasoline unit. The back of the fast kick gun is an air motor. Connected to the air motor are two separate positive displacement rods. Now we are going to install the air atomizer. You want to simply take off the rubber cap Screw on the nut and use a wrench to make sure it is nice and tight. Then we have the atomizer line that you want to insert on the other side until it clicks. When you pull the trigger, the air motor goes forward, pushing both positive displacement rods at the same speed to assure you a two to one mix. Over here, you'll see your forward and reverse label. To test, We'll push it in forward, pull the trigger, testing reverse, pull the trigger again. The following safety supplies are recommended and they can be purchased at www.sprayeasy.com. The safety equipment supplies that you will need are the full facial mask, the two vapor cartridges, your lens cover, your black nitrile gloves, digital thermometer, and your full protective bodysuit. One of the uses of the fast kick gun is spraying closed cell foam. These instructions show how to apply the foam to your project area. Open the case from the top of the box to prevent damage. Remove each of the static mixers, ensuring there are six in total as well as six cartridges. This is the elbow bracket that is included in your package. You will attach it to your static mixer until it clicks. To remove the elbow bracket, make sure you push it in and pull. There are metal teeth that grip to the static mixer and if you pull it out without pushing it in, you could damage it. You can use this elbow bracket on many cartridges if it is used properly. To set the proper pressure of the air atomization, you take the static mixer and you put it in the air atomizer. Then you put your thumb on the end of the air atomizer and turn the valve. When you turn on the valve, the pressure should be between 45 to 50 PSI for at least 30 seconds. If not, chances are that your compressor is too small or there is another problem. Please call us immediately if you are having any of these problems. You always want 100 PSI going into the gun. To adjust the air atomizer pressure, you pull the knob and rotate it until you get 45 to 50 PSI. Next, we will be testing the temperature of the foam. I will be using an empty cartridge for demonstration purposes. Remove the red cap and white plug from the top to make it visible into the liquid. Using the laser thermometer, shoot the laser down through these individual holes into the liquid, not outside of the cartridge. Replace the white plug and the red cap before continuing the next step. The temperature of the cartridge must be at 85 to 90 degrees for spraying foam. Other materials will have different temperatures. The most common method of heating material is in the microwave at 30 second intervals. The substrate area to be sprayed must not be below 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Once temperature is achieved, shake vigorously for about 20 seconds before removing the red cap and white plug. Notice the flange. The flange attaches to the cartridge by holding it firmly and flat against the spout and slowly screwing the black knob onto the mixer to the cartridge. 
Holding the gun on a steady surface, point it up. Place the cartridge in the gun with the static mixer, never facing down, as gravity will cause the foam to pour into the mixer and react. Making sure your button is in reverse. Pull the trigger. Place your cartridge into the positive displacement rod. And now we will place the elbow bracket onto the static mixer until it clicks. You always want to keep the gun in an upright position. If you tilt it one way or the other, materials can go up into the static mixer and prematurely harden. When the rods move the material forward, it goes into the static mixer. The air atomizer is what gives it the proper spray pattern. To turn this on, you must turn the valve and pull the trigger at the same time. This must be done in conjunction. If you don't, you risk the material going into the static mixer and hardening prematurely. Before spraying the foam, the pressure adjustment knob must be turned all the way clockwise. If not, it will cause the material to harden in the static mixer because the rods will be pushing it too slowly. Face the area you'll be spraying and from top to bottom, spray the material out completely. Once you start spraying a cartridge, you cannot stop. Once the cartridge is empty, eject it and repeat these steps. It is mandatory for the foam cartridges to be between 85 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit before spraying. If they are colder, the material will thicken, causing the pistons to move slower and your static mixer will clog up after spraying only half a cartridge. If the materials harden in the static mixer, you will not be able to use that cartridge or that static mixer. One of the unique features of the fast kick gun is there is no cleanup. You simply disconnect the air atomizer and pull out the cartridge and throw it away for disposal. Well, that's a wrap for the fast kick gun and closed cell phone product demonstration. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to visit our website at www.sprayeasy.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel.